Hello everyone, today I'm going to be watching Empire Earth Review by Mandalore Gaming. Alright, this is, this is like, this is my game. This is the game that I remember so, like, vividly. The, the best thing about this game was that it had a map editor, right? And you could put, basically, just edit everything about a character. You could put it, a stone dude uh, in front of a robot and then give the stone dude to attack movement speed and the god amount of health and then watch the ridiculous fight go on it's just so good and the resource gathering is uh, to be fair it's quite finite but at some point when you run out it's going to be war anyway man this guy missed this game so much oh boy but i i i got a bit of cold and um so bear with me if i uh, made a cough here and there and I've been basically, the time that <laughs> I haven't been uploading for you guys, I've been trying to figure out the uh, mod, mod IO and Baldur's Gate 3's mod kit, like toolkit. It's, I would say, um, the, trying to transfer your mods from Nexus to it has been a bit more difficult than I wanted to be. But I would say, it's surprisingly better. I, I just wish that it wouldn't just load everything. It would just, just load the thing that I want to just uh, touch. For example, if I want to touch a stats, load stats. If I want to touch meshes and textures, load those. It just loads everything and there's just so much memory usage. And it's just like, sometimes it's impossible to know uh, <laughs> what, what, what am I even doing? Because uh, there's delay between every word. Or maybe my computer is just dying. But yes, Mandel's Gaming Empire Earth Review. Let's check it out. 3 to 1. Go. Oh, music to my ears! Yes! Oh, that is, that is so nostalgic. That sound alone. Oh, it's so lovely. Yes, get that fish. Get that fish. Oh, no! <laughs> Fuck! Oh, I don't know which. <laughs> yep. Looks That's right to me. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh my god! I missed this music so much. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This is. This just hit my brain with so much nostalgia. Holy shit. I, I played this, I would play this game in my aunt's, like, uh, my aunt had like a, what do you call it, when they would, salon, a salon. And I would play it in my aunt's, like, house when I was like 12. It was just so fucking absurdly good, man. Oh my god. I didn't have a PC back then. To put it simply, a, Empire shit. Earth is like a super age of empires. In a single game, you could go from leading an army of cavemen to an army of robots. The <laughs> yep. scale of it was insane. It did incredibly well at launch. Most reviews are good and it got a few Game of the Year awards. Yes. And, best of all for the studio, it sold over the a million intro copies. Was awesome. It ended up getting a spiritual successor, and then there so were two sequels, but those were varied. Nowadays, you don't hear too much about Empire Earth. The first game does have its fair Sad. share of problems, but that's not the issue here. A lot of people run into issues just trying to run the thing. Especially the expansion. If the games don't freeze in the menu, there are other problems. You this can't handle the, the fucking and physical copies. The way to fix it is so simple it's aggravating. Let's begin. Some people on Windows 7 say they can run it perfectly fine with no problems, and other people can't. I tried it on my laptop, and I can't. This is the campaign! Oh my god, this is the campaign with the red plane, and then we fucking have to escape the pilot. I could get it Bro, working this on is... there, wouldn't let me oh record it easily, and had other problems. Yes. For example, right. check out Legolas. That's a fast what arm. What the fuck? Everyone shoots at a Kenyan murder machine fire rate now. It does technically run, but it's nearly unplayable. You can use a free program yes, called 3D okay. Analyze to force your pixel shaders to 1.1, which does work, but I can't record it. So that's good for a regular player, but not for me. What the fuck is this? What in the name of seven hell is this? <laughs> Why is there so many options? How do you how do you even manage to find a way to do this? Like, do, do you like look out? What is so that's this good for a regular call? player, but not for Tommy, me. There's a multiplayer systems. patch called Neo Empire Earth, which can fix it, but it has its own share of problems. Oh. I'll return to this later. But if you're on Windows 10, this won't automatically fix it anyhow. So I had to go on a journey. 
This is a real website. Let's tend to sit, but it has its own share of problems. I'll return to this later, but if you're on Windows 10, this won't automatically fix it anyhow. Wait, 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 what? If I'm on Windows, hey, vi this wind won't automatically fix it anyhow? What the fuck did you just say, man? So can I play it on Windows 11? So I had to go on a journey. This is a real website. It's not a Jolt. joke I made for the video. It's hard to comprehend exactly what I found, but I had to pass in the- oh, shit, this is like the Nexus mod runs The secret like to beat aliens to be people. here. Now you would think that a website like this would be a dead end, but I swear to god, the night after I went here I had a dream, or maybe a vision. I tried Ryan to run this Fisher. game in every compatibility mode I could think of, except Windows 8. The game won't even start to run on Windows 8. So I thought, what the hell, why not? That fixed it perfectly, for both games. The Windows graphics spiking 8 out is easy it? too. Just set your acceleration to TNL, and you're good to go. It won't work on real Windows 8, but set it to that mode, and it works. <laughs> what? Then what the fuck is the point? <laughs> what is Windows 8 anyway? There was never a Windows 8. So now that it's playable, let's start by looking at the graphics. For being a 3D RTS from 2001, it still looks very nice. Sprites typically age better than 3D models, so I thought it'd be a lot worse. It still can get rough, particularly with the character models. You it's, can zoom in really still far looks and amazing. some look okay. Others are downright Bro, worse. that dude! It still can get rough, particularly with the character That dude! That dude! Bro, this dude is probably one of the most savages people in the world. This dude makes a fucking volcano appear in the middle of your, like, existence. Or the storms. I love them. <laughs> even even the modern people, the robots have one of these like uh, what do you call it? Models. Or, you can uh, zoom in really far and some look <laughs> okay. Others are downright terrifying. It appears to be a low resolution photo of a person smiling, just stretched out. It's especially yeah. apparent in the cutscenes when you have a character speaking and they're just smiling. Seeing as this is an RTS game, it affects the campaign the most, but doesn't matter too much outside of it. it doesn't. Units have good, easily readable profiles from the top, and that's what matters to me. Even if you do zoom in more, it's usually fine. You'll know when you've gone too far. Yeah. I'm the Joker, baby! <laughs> what really impresses oh, me is how consistent the art sense. style remains throughout all the ages. You never have that moment where something looks way worse or looks like it was drawn by a different artist or just feels off. Seeing as no. there are 14 epics in total... No, everything's, everything's art is almost like... Um, it works together. It's just compatible with each other. There is no jarring thing at all. It just feels off. Seeing as there are 14 epics in total, that's an incredible feat. It really reminds me of the phrase, the more things change, yeah. the more they stay the same. Units and buildings may change, but they're still recognizable. The maps even have a day-night cycle, which unfortunately awkward. doesn't affect oh, gameplay, wow. but it looks nice. The visuals don't blow my socks off or anything, but they do their job right. With the sheer scale this game operates on, this could have been a disaster. I guess that's why I don't have a lot to say about the art style. It maintains the same quality throughout yeah. the ages, but the sounds are a little To different. be honest, art style in this game is just superb too. Like, look at this. This game come, came way before, way before any of the like, cool shit we got right now. Like, it's fucking StarCraft 2. Or like, um, to be fair, the Dead Generals that wasn't, wasn't, wasn't coming anymore. Yes. Why are we on horses? Fuck. Oh shit, yes! Ooh, oh, 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 I remember that! <laughs> Holy shit! Yes! Fuck, the sound I love this have so a lot much. Of stock sounds. There's a fair amount of effects made for the game, but it's hard to tell the difference between them. We're once again in the, this isn't great, but it's adequate territory. Yeah. There's a bit of irony with that when it comes to the music. For example, the main theme is amazing. It's fucking absurd! I can't say. I don't know if it's pseudo Latin, but it probably isn't, right? No, it's not. Someone has the lyrics for it. <laughs> Someone has the lyrics for it on YouTube. Like this, what which are less fuck? exciting. I wouldn't call it the worst. Don't get me wrong, it's pleasant, just not very memorable. Or yeah. so I thought. Years later, several television networks would buy up a bunch of these songs. History Channel, Animal Planet, CBS, the list goes on. If you want to hunt for it, there are certain episodes of Ancient Aliens that have Empire Earth music. What?! So some of the background tracks were so dull and so inoffensive that they essentially became stock music. 
For years, I'd watch documentaries and start thinking about Empire Earth and thought I was going crazy. I've been so inoffensive that they essentially are Earth music. So some of the background tracks were so dull and so inoffensive that they essentially became stock music. Just because something's too good that someone is using it for their own projects doesn't mean it's dull. The music is so good, man. The music is good in that game, right? That game for came years, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. I watched documentaries and thinking about Empire Earth and thought I was Jesus going Christ, crazy. Jesus Christ, it's been so long! Holy shit, I'm old. Maybe there were others out there who went through something similar, and now you know oh why. Oh my god. So aside from the theme, there wasn't a whole lot that stood out. The voice acting, however, is phenomenal. I come to you to make a plea for assistance. If you consent to help, I shall reward you handsomely when I Fuck am yes. Duke. Very well, young William. You should be my help and make <laughs> God be with us. It's perfect. What has happened? I'm losing control. The engine is dying. No fear. Get it to is the stupid chopper. after all to die so needlessly a hero's death. This is the prime <laughs> cut. <laughs> Bro, the AA, the AA system isn't even fucking aiming at the fucking plane. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> Give me a second. Let's continue. Thing him you could hope for. It doesn't matter how talented they are. They are really trying with every line. Have you ever heard someone be aggressively French? What be your business in our fair town? How about this? Oh God. <laughs> Now for some sport. Oh, Jesus. What? Leave her alone, you shrine. Germans? Two arms, two arms! There's more ham than a spirited Germans. away cosplay meet. This is the ideal formula for making your RTS lines memorable. In the Over same the house? voice acting. An offensive accent, or just the wrong accent. Silly writing. All three of these ingredients blend together perfectly. Yes. Some of these lines have been burned into my brain, and I don't think I, I can I ever forget them. I didn't get no English back then. Yeah? Say good. Your target? Of course! Yeah? What sport? Yeah? <laughs> I got you! <laughs> oh, I fucking missed that guy! Oh, I got ya. Shit, Greeks! Bro, his name is just Greeks! Or maybe that's the team. I fucking love that. The colors, yes. This brings back so many memories, it almost makes my, like, it makes my spine shiver because I want this game now on my hard drive or uh, somewhere. This is so good. Yo oh my god, man. <laughs> it just indeed dropped no doubt by an inattentive traveler. And look inside, a shiny sword and cloth to bandage my wound. <laughs> Jesus. Bro, this reminds me of... This reminds me of uh, a stronghold crusaders when Arab units would uh, say Arabic like uh, bro, the assassin was the most creepiest thing. I thought that was the only thing that I could to some degree understand because English was difficult, but Arabic was being taught to us too. So it was it was something when when you hear a language, for example, Arma Tree has a faction that speaks literally Persian. They literally speak Persian in uh, the game. So when you hear that something like that, it basically makes the game slightly better. But this is this is this brings us so many different memories. My lord, the small force we currently have will oh, be Jesus no match Christ. for Napoleon. We must enlarge our infantry and dragoon divisions and assemble a suitable number of cannon. Oh, yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. So looking at the presentation as a whole, Love it's it. pretty good. Colorful graphics with colorful characters are good at drawing you in and keep you engaged. Now here's what the game's all about. <laughs> nope. Yes. Like yes. most RTS games, you want to gather, build, and destroy. The way resources are distributed is a little oh, different compared to other now. RTS games like Age of Empires. Empire Earth is all about preparing you for the long haul. A single tree can hold several buildings worth of wood. That's going to take time to deplete. On the other hand, iron, stone, and gold are near unlimited. A single vein can hold around 300,000 of each resource. True. That'll last the whole game. But it's still not Wood is a lot more limited. limited. A single patch might only hold a few thousand resources, which will go fairly quickly. Animals only have a few hundred food. You farm. If you don't give them time to breed, you can hunt them to extinction. Same thing with fishing sites. Farm. Very limited. Well, this I think you, you need the first tech tree to farm, start farming. Changes in the third epic, the Copper Age, when you can build farms. Now it's like ore. Virtually unlimited food. The farms don't need to be reseeded okay, either. Never mind. As long as they're not blown up, they can be farmed forever. Here's the kicker. 
only six people can work a resource node maximum. You can increase the rate by sending your citizens to populate a settlement. This turns it into a town center, which can make its own citizens. Plus, it gives bonuses to mined resources right next to it. It also... You can also increase their, like, abilities. You ba basically make them gather faster, gather more, and move faster, too, if you give so them, now like, it's more all efficient. the upgrades. It's but so you can good. do it again to turn a town center into a capital, which is even more Bro efficient. But this every turns game, it every game that has this, center, which can make its own citizen. Every game that has this has this bit. Has this bit, you see the X I I I, the upgrade system that basically enhances all of your technology. I love those games. Age of Empire, fucking Empire Earth. Uh, I, I don't remember any game. Uh, no, 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 no. Do, is there a game that you can basically upgrade the mother? mother base and then upgrade everything else and then up more upgrades and more upgrades more rts's like that plus it gives because bonuses to mine resources those. right next to it so now the it's more efficient involved. but you can do it again to turn a town center into a capital and which is even more efficient everything too. if you sacrifice Look, 50 citizens different. in total then you'll have the most efficient capital for your mining node That's but as true. things get more expensive you'll just want to go and capture more nodes you can probably see where this is going empire earth is a war of attrition you don't exhaust your resources you exhaust your people you yes. don't even need houses to increase your population. It increases morale, represented by the green dots, but that helps units resist damage. Just being in the range of an upgraded settlement building will give a tower a 50% resist to damage. Oh. This means that most factions will have a home turf advantage. It's not quite the Turtler's Paradise that Supreme Commander is, but it's close. You need a good variety of units to break a defense, I love don't worry, there's a I love Turtler's strategy so much, you make vaults, you make aggressive defense system, and you just keep putting pressure on the enemy so they don't attack you. But, but the gold edition came with a tech tree and, you. well, look at it. What does the game this, be just being in the range of an upgraded settlement building will give a tower a 50% resist to damage. This means that most factions will have a home turf advantage. It's not quite the Turtler's Paradise that Supreme Commander is, but... <coughs> oh. Supreme Commander. I should play Supreme Commander. It has, like, turtle. It's, it's, like, turtle supremacy is my it's favorite. close. You need a good variety of units to break a defense, and don't worry, there's a lot. Oh, the gold yes. edition came with a tech tree and, well, look at it. Don't, this isn't for Crusader Kings, it's for an that. RTS just game. Read. Just read. Taking it in all at once can feel kind of overwhelming, but luckily you don't have to deal with these all at once. The mm. game has several <laughs> tutorial <laughs> missions to teach you with, so it's not that bad. Especially if you've played Age of Empires, there's a lot you'll find familiar. It's the same designer as the first game, after all. There are the age-old priest units that can convert enemies. No, you just then there are the prophets. Random. He doesn't convert yes. people, but he's good at throwing malaria. <laughs> you're, you're not he can also summon controllable hurricanes to make boats go away. He yes. can set buildings on fire with a lightning strike, and those fires will spread fast. He has volcanoes, the list yes! goes on. The best. Going back to the home field advantage aspect, building a temple will protect an area around it from profits. If you don't want your people being converted, a university will stop that happening inside its boundary. If you don't build these, you'll probably regret it. I'm getting bamboozled. Oh my god, dude. As for combat, the game starts very Earthquake. simply. Yes. It's rock, paper, scissors, on sea, and on land. Shot the game is Chris very Adam. centered around these counters. For example, our humble clubman here. He has no armor at all against spearmen. He can only upgrade armor protecting him from other clubmen. The spearman has base armor from the get-go against them, but can upgrade into more. Armor and damage values increase throughout the ages, so this only gets more important. Yes. It just turns into guns and lasers instead of swords and arrows. This you is just so good. This is so good. Because they basically made an RTS, every unit, almost uh, an RPG character, which can basically get their attack, get their range attack or accuracy. Is that, I think is that range damage, melee damage, speed, armor, and by just clicking a stat the to spend resources. Shield? The upgrade applies it's to all so units good. of the same type, and they have a limit of 10 points. Upgrading an aspect like range or attack could be 2 points a pop, whereas something Movement like armor speed, might yes, only be 1 please. point. So your units can be much, much more effective at killing their counter, which can get a little more complicated. What Civilizations also have unit bonuses. What the fuck was that? Digital versus nano ages. Oh man. What what about robots? What do robots do? Because there's so many good robots. Small Civilizations robots. also have unit bonuses. There's even a handy builder so you can make your own and make your friends my mad. favorite. This so is you my could focus your favorite. civ towards a very powerful unit, but it'll still barely tickle its counter. This system might seem okay to you, but it leads into one of the game's biggest flaws, the AI. Besides the random maps, the game has four main campaigns to choose from. The Greek campaign is more of a second tutorial about illegally crossing oceans, and I don't ever play it much. The English campaign has a better variety of missions, but the ages it covers are more varied. 
When you complete missions or side objectives in a game, you get Civ points. These carry throughout the campaign, and it's a great idea. Do something more difficult now to make the journey ahead a little easier. This is fine if the setting stays the same. But if you're in the British. English campaign where the setting jumps from Agincourt to Waterloo, those archer points are wasted now. You need every bit of help you can get. The non-Greek campaigns usually start easy, but then they have a spike of difficulty. The AI will suddenly have a lot of units. Fully oh. upgraded, too. The that AI sucks! What the fuck? That she's clearly cheating now! It's cr Bro, I fucking hated AI when AI... I fucking hate it in RTS games when the AI gets like double the gold, double the resources. That's cheating! Make it think better! Make it do better! The AI will suddenly have a lot of units. Fully upgraded, too. That sucks. The AI in this game cheats, and it cheats a hard. The best them. example can be found in the Russian campaign. It takes place in the dark, nightmare future of 2018. The story is a timeless classic. A man wanted by the authorities for having the tallest boots in all of Russia. You make some friends, fight off invaders, it's not all too right. bad. The second mission was one I struggled with for weeks at launch. The campaigns didn't even have difficulties at launch back then, they were patched in later. So I sent the game to medium and thought, ah, that was 15 years ago, it can't be that bad. You oh, know, I have all this experience now. Awful. Yeah, this, ta this takes a long time to do. Sometimes you have to strategy for like, <laughs> bro. It's, it's the difficulty, the difficulty is meant to make you play for a very long period of time, to be able to actually, like, punish, punish it, and to, to be able to punish you to learn more, and to, uh, like, um, explore other uh, strategies. So, to, to be fair, they probably didn't try this mission. But it was still doable, There's so it was many still units, doable. And they just don't stop. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Make more. They just you need don't to make. Stop! You need to make more underwater uh, apparatus. What was it called? Uh, the submarines. More submarines. I know we are. There are so more many enemy towers. ships in the harbor that they're causing a traffic jam. I'd love a yes. profit to hurricane them, but Russia's orthodox, and you can't do that. Most of the campaign is what? this: non-stop swarms of enemies. Yes. The AI makes units for free, so you can't hit their economy. Oh, oh. You just oh, have to weather shit. the storm until you can smash them. The AI yes. also knows exactly what you're building and most likely where all your units are. They will immediately start building free counters to all your units. You can make all the strategies or well, cool spellcasting robots you want. It doesn't stop it. You're locked in. The best strategy is to build a death wall to catch all their units. Yep. Then you invest into the nuclear program until your problems go away. <laughs> There's so little room for strategy, it feels more like playing a tower defense game. That's, That's what happens when you give the AI That's a free really pass. Fucking true. What's sad is the Russian campaign is the hardest, but also the most memorable. Grigor, the new Russian leader, gets a Gundam as a bodyguard. Then he names it as the new leader of Russia. Who shall henceforth be known as Grigor II? What? People don't like that idea, <laughs> but you can't exactly tell the new guy no. Duh. For the people. So the robot has to defeat a coup, but the coup was a just as planned kind of thing. Then Grigor 1 dies. Rest easy, my master. I will ensure your dreams do not die here with you. So fucking Russian, oh my god, I didn't know Russians give up the fuck is now China and then he starts to invade Cuba. Then of nation. course he wants to wipe out a few million people, so oh, a Russian shit. general wants to stop him, and he's a cyborg by the way. So then he defects to the United States where Predator Polly Pocket tells him the only way to stop them is to go back in time. So you go back to the first oh mission god, on the yes. other side, but there's nuclear bombers because Grigor 2 is already there. Because he later made a time machine, but just went back before they used their time machine. So then you have to fight off the future using modern technology, and it's honestly a pretty fitting way to end the campaign. So this is giving you a taste of the Roman map all. AI. It cheats in units, resources, and knows what you're up to on every difficulty. It makes all the strategy completely one-sided. Sure, you can raid their mining camps, but it won't affect their economy. Make You'll it tower. Make it, always make it tower. And to be fair, you don't need an AA at least until like industrial resistance and like what do you call it? Renaissance and shit. Dealing but with at the attack same time, groups no matter what you do. It also it doesn't give up or resign, it fights resource. to the last man. The solution to this seems obvious. Just play multiplayer. Well, the multiplayer never took off like Age of Empires did, and I think there are two key reasons to it. The first big one is pathfinding. Let's do a comparison. Here's Age of Empires 2. Look at all this control I have. I can switch up their formation, move it half a second later, oh, and they adapt. Lovely. It doesn't matter how many units you have or how diverse they are, they move as one. You can organize and move them effectively. Empire Earth has nearly identical formations. A few more, in fact. But look how sloppy they are trying to move into one. They do get it, but it takes significantly longer. Now let's move them. Well, humans are flawed. And they're kind of wandering humans all over. Humans aren't let's the move perfect around. military. And you see, now it's all messed up. It just doesn't have that responsiveness and smooth organization. 
Besides not looking elegant, you can get out. these traffic they're not, jams. They're not the more really units you have it. in a stack, the higher chance something will go wrong with their pathfinder. You can't ruin, you can't ruin this game. This game is my existence. Besides not looking childhood. elegant, the units can I get these traffic it. jams. The more units you have in a stack, the higher chance something will go wrong with their pathfinding. This makes it harder to sell as a competitive game. Ocean pathfinding is even worse, true. even in small groups. <laughs> it's not the, the other issue is the thought. speed of the game. Empire Earth matches can go on for hours. With all those resources, you could fight on a long time. You can't just set aside a half an hour for a game, you need to set aside an evening. You could set a starting age for later, but Six a lot of the hours. strategy is building up. And there are a few ages that feel like filler. In the second age in the game, the Stone Age, you can build a dock and an archery range. Compared to one epic later in the Copper Age, when you can build all of this. There's about three of these epics that don't add a lot and just make the games drag on longer. Well, well, those epics and those upgrades are necessary to create the time for you to get each, each tick. Like humans didn't just <clears throat> humans didn't just invent the wheel and then antibiotics and then boom a space. No, it was a gradual state, but it eventually went off. That's how it works here too. We has eventually uh, reached the Renaissance and the Industrial Revolution. Um, by the, the, but after that, everything just exploded and there was just inventions left and right. I think that's why this game has... Let, let's, let's not call them filler because they still give you some stuff. Filler, filler in current modern day gaming has become something that is overused to the point of just nauseam. So let's not call someone just making a slightly different classes and different like archer systems and like horse... Uh, what do you call it? Riders... Um, one of their tech, un like until you get the big tech, um, lazy or what do you call it? The variety across all the ages is great, and progressing to the end is what makes it so fun. Going from cavemen to mechs in a single game, getting gunpowder before your neighbors, launching those first few carriers. That's true. That's what you it's all about. It fast. If you're a fan of an era, you could play games centered around them in Empire Earth, but you're missing out. You could just play an RTS game dedicated to that era instead of this one. But wait. What about the expansion? Oh yes. Okay, you remember let's, the big tech tree. It. Well, here's the expansion. Check out the length of it. It's uh, more like a brochure with no foldout. What? I don't have a stapler, but you could kind of staple it onto the end here. There we go. Okay, it's really bad. Art of Conquest was outsourced. It shows. It really shows. There are three new oh. campaigns, and a lot of them just don't have any voice acting in the cutscenes. I was reading dialogue, no so I thought acting? it could be a bug because there should be sound there. I looked it up and no, working as intended. Then you hear someone wish it was quiet again. It's bad. It's bad bad. Please spare Mediolanum. We have rejoiced at your great exploits in Gaul. And now that you have defeated Pompey's guard force, we are free to join you. If you That's show mercy, I will good. go with you to try and rally other cities to your battle exploits in Gaul. And now that you have defeated Pompey's guard force, we are free to join you. Where is the dot? Where is the puncture? Where is anything? Where is, there is nothing used here, man. Take a breather. Give me a second for a second. <laughs> what? Three, two, one, go. If you show mercy, I will go with you to try and rally other cities to your banner. Oof. The game finally gets a it's Roman campaign, and it's this. I shall let my pets decide. Romulus, Remus, which of these envoys would you like to eat? To the other we shall give aid. I don't remember what? Caesar having pet tigers, but Holy what's shit. happening? The worst voice work by far is the new units. Not even the acting, the production values. At your service, Elysium. You can hear static. At your service, Tribune. Forward the frontier. Oh my fucking god. Like you couldn't put it in Audacity or any lit Adobe Premiere Pro has some vocal enhancement systems. Like, you couldn't do that, man? Come on, dude. It's a game developer. You, it, it is so, it, it's so, it, you can even retake it if, if the mic is fucked up. You can even, like, fix it in the post. You can, it's so easy to fix a static noise or, like, um, outside noise as long as it's, like, like, even. It's not jarring. It's you can absolutely remove it from that. At your service, Tribune. Yeah, they even echo over each other. Oh, None God. of the old units do that. Vini, vidi, vici. Vini, vidi, vici. Vini, vidi, vici. Oh, Assassination yes. software. It did. It did. It did. It did. I'll be. Vini, vidi, vici. Vini, vidi, vici. Vini, vidi, vici. 
It echoed toward it echoed with perfect sync, so you didn't hear it. Assassination right? software online. I'll be the ghost in the machine. Cyber hey. Ninja. The strangest offender is the new SAS unit. There's a lot that's strange about the model, but listen to him. Affirmative. Just give the word. I'm on it. Huh. There are three new campaigns this time around, uh, shorter in mission length and the scale of the first game. Like the maps are actually a lot more interesting design-wise than the first game's base campaigns, but it's counteracted. Most missions are tedious. They range from playing Marco Polo, to island hopping, to this one. The World War II campaign is probably the best, which the misses the fuck? game's main selling point. The new 15th epic, the Space Age. The campaign Excuse teases me? you with it what non-stop. Even when you start on Mars, you're still not in the Space Age. Then you finally make it. You can make automatic farms. I guess that saves some population cap. Then Yo. you realize that space is just water retextured. You can't have space and water on the same map. Oh my the god, are you kidding me? are just the me? boats in different forms. This addition might have been neat if you could have water on the maps too. And this form would just keep players separated until the end game. By removing all the naval options, it actually takes strategy away from the game. No attack submarines, no hunter helicopters, no nuke subs. No boats at all. No thanks. Even without space, they did add a few civilization unique units and some powers. Those are you can moves. even choose one for your custom civilization. What? What? Okay, that was that's interesting actually. When they made a space RTS work within different bodies, of, like celestial bodies, that's the, I never seen something like that. That's actually very interesting. But, <laughs> oh my God! Oh, Jesus Christ, that was hard. I think my nose came up. Ugh. But yeah, i never seen something like that. Maybe. To be fair, may maybe if they would have like explored it more, maybe they, they, give, they give more ships, more teleport sections, like, like a wormhole generator, like a teleport generator, for you to get there easier. It might have made it more fun. But that's actually very interesting. I actually enjoy the maps that are like, you have an island for yourself and you have like maybe like 40 minutes you one hour until any ship tries to find you so that's that's i love that but you might not know what a lot of them do so you gotta dig out the manual or the guide oh my Wait, god that it's was the book. wrong manual the Two powers books. are astoundingly poorly balanced the fact that someone okayed the idea for a priest tower just blows my mind so the powers range from near useless to game breaking that's it. That's the expansion. Just, this was about forty dollars in today's money at launch. Most people who checked it out went back to the base game. You can uh, still probably. find people playing multiplayer, but not with the game alone. <laughs> you need to download Neo Empire Earth for that. It installs on top of the base game. A word of warning: you need to. What is the right reserve for? Two thousand one, bro. I thought, uh, yeah, this download like Neo Empire very old Earth for game. that. It installs on top of the base game. A word of warning: my computer said there's a Trojan inside of it. Everyone I know who downloads it says that. What's the Trojan called? Loader that exists. That's the, that's offline loader that exists. That's offline loader. That's basically just the loader. That's the Everyone patch. I know who downloads it says that. It's probably now okay, the guy who made it says it's a false positive. It does it work without the spooky file, but I still don't like that. Yeah, it's a time-consuming game, even if you use tournament mode, but I still enjoy it. I really wish it got the HD edition treatment the way Age of Empires 2 and Age of Mythology did. Touch it up a bit, fix some bugs and balance things out, but most importantly, bring the multiplayer back. I'm pretty sure that Rebellion still owns the rights to it. I'd love to see it, but I don't know how big the demand would be. It would be nice not to have to jump through hoops just to comp stomp. At the time of this video, GOG is selling it for 2 bucks and it regulars for 6, which is a great price. I didn't cover it in this video, but don't buy the complete series. No. Two is okay, but by God, you do not want to play three. Do not no. buy three. No, I that played does it for them this both. Video. I played, I played one, two, three. Two and three both suck. If you want to play a good Age of Empire, Age of Empire, Empire Earth, play one, play the first one. Even, even if it looks like just a bunch of polygon, it's so much better than majority of the RTS game that came afterwards and the games that are, we have right now. To be honest, uh, to be fair, not that much. It's still aged, obviously, as he's saying it. But I would, I still play this game. I still play this game. It's so good. Tune in next time for the first mod video. It's just so Thanks for watching. Good. I'm not sure what game will come after this since Elite is in a bind again. Also, big thank you to all that the benefactors. Sucks. This week's questions will be moved into Aww. the next game review video. If you backed in June, your name will show up in July. Thank you. He's, he's not wrong. 
He's not wrong. The game has major, many issues. The DLC seemingly was not that good. I never played the DLC. But I didn't. I, I didn't have internet back then. Back then I was just a guy. <laughs> a little dude. Man. But I, I played it a ton. I played that red uh, plane mission a lot. I, I remember fucking about in map editor, making maps, making random enemies fight each other, making it very, very, very fast like cave dude. Oh my god, it was so fun. But the missions, to be honest, I didn't learn, I didn't understand English back then. So I didn't even pay attention to this campaign at all. I was just like, oh shit, funny English dude. Let's play. But yes. I would say though. Th is there, is there back any game? Center. They're actually gonna smack it. Did he lose? Oh my god. Fuck, yes, yes, yes. The moment you start to try, the moment you try to get to another resource section or like find another resource, they immediately come and destroy your towers and your things and they bring their workers to take that resource. Even though, even though the fucking AI is getting free resources anyways. Man, AIs are cheaters. Holy shit. But yes, play this game. This game is oh, perfect. It's awesome. It's awesome. I love it. But you thanks for watching, man. Man, I, man, I miss this so much. See you all later.